Do you remember your first 3D movie? Maybe if you're older than, say, 40 years old, <coughs> like me, <coughs> it was a pretty big deal. Mine was some sort of horror movie on television. I think it was on our local independent television channel, and I think we had to get the glasses at the grocery store? There wasn't much actual 3D content. But since then, sometime in the early 80s, 3D is everywhere, and not just in some scary eyeballs coming out of the television. No, we're printing in 3D, designing 3D integrated circuits. And yes, there is that occasional 3D movie as well. <laughs> and yes, my friends, it's even taking chalk talks by storm. But today, we're not talking about just any 3D. Oh no, we're digging into the details of 3D NAND flash, specifically for the SD card market. And yes, no glasses will be needed. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. With the rise of autonomous vehicles, IoT, and 5G, the need for bigger memory, lower costs, and longer lifespans is making 3D NAND a must. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Brian Donovan from Panasonic and I are chatting all about how 3D NAND is shaking up the SD card market and what you need to keep in mind when choosing 3D NAND for your next SD card design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you will find even more information about this topic. Hi, Brian. Thank you so much for joining me. How you doing? Nice to see you. Okay, so we're here today to talk about storage media, but what exactly does Panasonic have to offer in this space? So basically, we have four different series of SD cards and embedded memory. So we have the industrial SD, the 2D Consumer Plus SD cards, the 3D Consumer Plus SD cards, which were just released, and the EMMC, which is an embedded device. Now for the industrial SD cards, you have different types of NAND flash used in each card. So you have either a 2D MLC, which is rated for 2000 write cycles, or you have a 2D SLC, which is rated for 60,000 write cycles. For these cards, we use Micron as our NAND flash supplier. And for the controller IC is 100% designed by Panasonic in-house. So the hardware and firmware is all designed by Panasonic, which basically ensures reliability and longevity of the card. The speed grades are up to UHS-1 U3, which is up to 95 megabytes per second speed rating. And the operating temperature is a standard negative 40C to plus 85C rating. For the 2D Consumer Plus cards, we use a 2D MLC type NAND flash supplied by Toshiba. Our controller IC is a joint venture design controller between Panasonic and a company that we supply in Taiwan. And the program cycles for that are 2000 normally, but we can also run them in a pseudo SLC mode to achieve 20,000 write cycles. And the speed grade for that is a UHS-1 U3 up to 95 megabytes per second transfer rate. Operating temperature as standard for those is negative 25C to plus 85C. For the 3D Consumer Plus cards, the new ones that we just released, the capacities range from a mere four gigabytes up to a 256 gigabytes high capacity. The NAND flash in those are a 3D TLC, which is rated for 3K write cycles. That NAND is also supplied by Toshiba and the controller is also done by PMSTC, our joint venture company in Taiwan that develops our controller. Again, the program cycles for this, they're around 3,000 for the lower grade TLC, and we can run that TLC in a pseudo SLC mode to achieve 20,000 write cycles. For the speed grade, those are UHS U1, a little bit slower than the 2D Consumer Plus cards, but still rated for up to 95 megabytes per second read speeds. And operating temperature as standard with those is negative 25C to plus 85C. Now, fourth, for the EMMC, which is an embedded chip, basically an onboard solder down chip, capacities range from 8 gigabyte to 32 gigabytes currently. Those use a 2D MLC rated for 2K write cycles with the NAND coming from Toshiba. And again, the controller is made by PMSTC, our joint venture company. The speed grade for those is rated for up to HS400 mode, which is a little bit different from the SD cards because it's an MMC interface rather than an SDIO interface. And that speed is up to 260 megabytes per second. And the operating temperature as standard is rated for an industrial type temp, negative 40C to plus 85C. Okay, cool. So tell me about the new stuff and what's so special with 3D NAND? 
So with 3D NAND, I'll kind of back up and give a little intro on like what's the difference between 2D and 3D. So for 2D NAND, the memory cells are placed side by side on the silicone substrate material when they're made on the silicone wafer in the factory. With 3D NAND, basically these memory cells are stacked vertically in a U-shaped string. So instead of getting one layer of 2D NAND, you get 64 layers with the 3D NAND, which basically increases the bit density, which in turn increases the total memory capacity of the device. The difference with 3D NAND is that they use a charge trap technology in their memory cells to store data versus the 2D NAND, which uses a floating gate technology. And the difference is that charge trap is basically an insulator and uses a silicon nitrate material to store the data in, whereas the 2D NAND uses a polysilicone conductor material to store the data. So basically, 2D NAND is a little bit less susceptible to harsh temperature changes than 3D NAND. It actually traps the data and electrons a little bit more efficiently than the 3D NAND cell. However, all the new technology and the market trend is going towards a 3D NAND type memory. So another important distinction between 2D and 3D NAND is the minimum die size. So with 2D NAND, your minimum die size will be 4 gigabytes, and basically you'll use multiple dice on one chip to get to, say, a 32 gigabyte, 64 gigabyte, 128 gigabyte capacity. With the 3D NAND, your minimum die size is 16 gigabytes. So you no longer have that 4 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte option unless you were to run it in a pseudo SLC mode like we do with our new lineup. So you'll get 16 gigabytes and then you'll use multiples of that for a higher capacity card. So if I'm thinking about 3D NAND, what do I really need to keep in mind? What are the upsides and downsides? So one of the main positives of 3D NAND is the memory capacity. Like I said earlier, the minimum capacity for a single die is 16 gigabytes. So for any high write applications, anything requiring a high, high capacity, 3D NAND is the perfect technology. For overall cost, 3D NAND actually reduced the cost trend in the market compared to 2D. 3D NAND is actually being produced more prevalently than 2D NAND right now in the market from many different NAND suppliers like Toshiba, Micron, SK Hynix, Samsung. So it's driving the cost down by an average of 10 to 30% and even beyond that. Also, power consumption of the 3D NAND memory cells is a lot less and they draw nearly 50% of the current of the 2D NAND cards. So for a normal read or write operation, you'll draw maybe 50 milliamps with the 3D NAND, whereas with the 2D NAND, you might draw 100 milliamps or over. The fourth positive of 3D NAND is the life endurance. So the new TLC grade flash can achieve 3K program cycles, while the older 2D MLC grade achieves only 2K write cycles. So there's a little bit of a difference. We get a little bit more longevity out of the new technology. In terms of the negatives, basically speed and performance is one of the negatives. So card speed is dependent on many factors. You know, the host device, what speed they're setting it to, what clock frequency they're setting it to but the average speed of the new 3D cards is a little bit slower than the 2D inherently. Also, the temperature resistance of 3D NAND memory cells is not as great as 2D. So if you have a very high or very low temperature you're operating at, with the 3D NAND, you might lose a little bit more data and electrons out of those charge trap memory cells compared to 2D cards. We could screen our 2D cards to negative 40C to plus 85C, but with the new 3D, we can only screen them to negative 25C to 85C. Maybe a neutral point between both positive and negative is the larger ECC algorithm that we use with the 3D NAND cards in the controller. So the new ECC algorithm corrects 120 bits per kilobyte of data written, as opposed to the former 40 bit per kilobyte with used with the older SD controllers. And now this is used to combat any inherent data corruption within the new 3D NAND cards. Okay, can we break this down into some of the specific new products? Sure. So for the new series of 3D cards, one of them is called the UC series that we just released. That's a standard SD form factor with capacities ranging from 16 to 256 gigabytes. And that uses Toshiba's third generation of 3D NAND, which is called BIX3. And that's a TLC grade rated for approximately 3K program cycles. Now that controller is designed by PMSTC or Fizon Panasonic with uh, firmware basically done pretty much 100% by Panasonic. The class 10 rating and UHS-1 U1 performance is up to 95 megabytes per second, as I stated earlier. These cards also have static wear leveling as a feature in the controller, which distributes even wear across all memory cells to increase longevity of the device. They're also designed to be used primarily with FAT file systems, either FAT12, FAT16, FAT32, or XFAT, but they can be used with Linux under certain conditions. Okay, cool. So, Brian, what if I want a micro SD? 
We actually also have a micro SD that we just released as well called the TC series. The capacities for that, those cards are 16 gigabytes up to 256 gigabytes. And they're using also BIX3 Toshiba NAND flash with TLC grade rated for 3K write cycles. Again, those are class 10 UHS-1 U1 performance up to 95 megabytes per second with the same static wear leveling algorithm as the last cards. And again, designed to be used primarily with FAT file systems and also can be used with Linux under certain conditions, but not in most conditions. So what if my application requires more than 3,000 program cycles? So we also have the UA series, which is also in a standard SD form factor in capacities of 4 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte. In the future, we may also support 16 and 32 gigabytes. These use BIX3 Toshiba NAND flash in a TLC grade, but they're running in pseudo SLC mode, so they actually achieve 20K total program cycles, which is good for applications requiring not so much an industrial card or a consumer card, but kind of right in the middle that has that good price point, but also very reliable. Now, these are also a little bit higher read speed, so UHS-1 U3 performance. They're up to 95 megabytes per second read speeds, but they're a little bit higher write speed than the former UC series and TC series cards. Again, these have static wear leveling as well as a standard feature to distribute even wear across the memory cells. And they're designed to be used with file systems that are FAT-based and Linux-based. So EXT3 and EXT4 are fine to use with these cards as well. Is there a micro version of this as well? There is. We also have a TA series. So we have 4 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte in this series as well. Again, 16 and 32 will be supported in the future. But again, these are TLC grade running in a pseudo SLC mode rated for 20K program cycles. So it's a very versatile type of card, even though they're only available in two capacities at the moment. UHS-1 U3 performance, which is pretty fast for most applications, it's perfect. And then static wear leveling again to distribute even wear across the card. And again, these can be used in both FAT-based systems, which are basically Windows-based systems, or EXT3 and EXT4 Linux file systems. So what if I'm having an issue with my SD card, or I don't know how robust the card needs to be for my device? So one of the positives about Panasonic is that we have great technical support. Not only do we have local support in the States, in New Jersey and California, we also have engineers in Japan with 30 plus years experience of analyzing cards and promoting the most suitable solution to the customer. So we offer engineering support services where we can basically do a failure analysis or we can take a card that's been tested already and give a customer the lifetime endurance of the card. And basically how their device uses it, we can tell them how long the card will last in that particular device. So we use something called the protocol analyzer, which basically does an access pattern analysis and basically runs through the whole process of the card from an initialization up to write operations and read operations and things like that. And it gets the um, timing specs of the host device. And we also can look at the average erase count, maximum erase count of each data block. So with that data, we can use to extrapolate and give the customer a lifetime endurance of a certain SD card in their device. So with the log analysis report, we can basically take a test card and then analyze the customer's data, and we can give them a lifetime simulation of different types of SD cards to let them know which one is best suited for their application. And we can also do a cost-benefit analysis as part of this report to say, you know, if you have a 10 to 15 year lifetime, which card will last you that complete 10 to 15 years without having to replace that particular SD card? So here you can see a example of the log analysis report that we provide to customers. So basically the steps are, we basically send a log testing card out to the customer. They would use it for around two to four weeks. They would send it back to us and we would analyze their access pattern to try and extrapolate the data so that we can promote the suitable card that they'll be able to buy and use for the whole extended duration of their device's lifetime. So if they need a card to last 15, 20 years, we can promote and offer a suitable card for that amount of lifetime. So basically, we'll give a summary in a table of different types of Panasonic SD cards and the life that they'll achieve based on their host device's access patterns. So while they might need, you know, 10 years life out of the card, we can also give them a breakdown of, you know, this card will last you maybe two years, this card will last you five years, this card will last you 10, 20, something like that. So at least they can compare and contrast also along with the pricing for each card so they can see which one they want to go with in the end. So what kinds of trends are you seeing in the memory market with SD cards currently? 
Overall, the memory market, we see a long-term demand for the semiconductor market to increase, which is driven by many different trends. Autonomous driving, 5G, IoT, the smartphone market is huge with memory demand. So we see some long-term demand for the semiconductor market, and we're expecting it to increase in popularity, which is mostly driven by trends in autonomous driving, 5G, IoT, and also the smartphone market. And then overall prices for NAND flash are expected to actually decrease with improved 3D NAND technology. And also as more NAND fabs switch from 2D production to 3D production, that will also overall decrease the prices of NAND flash. According to a recent report from Micron, they're expected to lower 3D NAND prices with their ramp up of 96 layer 3D production. So right now with Toshiba, we're at a 64 layer production, but Micron's future 96 layer production will basically be expected to lower the 3D costs overall globally. So we're here at Panasonic to talk about all of this, and I'm sure you're happy to tell me what Panasonic brings to the table in this space. Yeah, so we see around the memory market, there's a lot of competition, especially with removable memory like SD cards and even EMMC. The question is, what do we bring to the table? So in terms of global success, We actually started with SD cards and removable memory back in 2002. We're actually one of the patent holders of the SD card along with SanDisk and Toshiba. So we basically started the market trend of removable memory. Also, our controllers are in-house designed and we do all of our own firmware, which basically is a positive for us compared to some other competition that maybe you might use a third-party controller or third-party firmware and they can't do any modifications to their firmware to fit the customer's device. So number two, support. Like I said before, we have very extensive support in Japan, engineers with 30 plus years experience, and we also do that failure analysis and support for customers basically free of charge. So that log analysis service that I was promoting before, totally free of charge and gives a lifetime cost benefit analysis for the customer. A lot of times when you go to a customer, they don't really know what type of memory device they need. A lot of times when you talk to engineers, memory is the last thing that they think of. So it's important to educate them on what the different types of NAND flash are and why we're different with our in-house controller versus some of the other competitors. So our philosophy is basically promoting longevity and for you to only use one SD card in your device rather than having another device fail and replace them multiple times. So that's our philosophy. So basically, you have a better return on investment and your total cost over the device lifetime is low compared to using some other competitor which might fail you know, over time, a couple of years down the line. That's something that we want to avoid with our products. And number three, that kind of goes into reliability. So we 100% screen test our cards at the factory. Every single card that we ship out goes through a certain amount of write cycles to ensure that it's writing and reading correctly. We also support wide operation temperatures. So we have negative 40 to 85 C temps and also negative 25 to 85 C temps. So it can be used in a wide variety of applications and even in harsh weather conditions. And third, we have a controlled bomb to ensure product consistency. So obviously, we're at the mercy of our NAND flash suppliers when they come out with a new type of generation of NAND flash. But we try to control our bill of materials as best as possible so that we could support up to a 10-year total device lifetime and even longer if a customer requests that. Okay, Brian, if I'm ready to get started, where should I go first? Well, if you're interested in learning more about our storage media lineup and the new 3D cards, just please visit our website. You can also download our new storage media solutions guide. It's a really easy way to choose the most suitable card for your application. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Brian. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. Appreciate it. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Panasonic's storage media solutions. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of eejournal.com. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, keyword eejournal.